Hello everyone. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. We had a great weekend and it is a lovely day here. It is actually in the 70s, which is a shock. I left to go do errands and had to come back inside and put a short sleeve shirt on because it was actually kind of steamy. So anyways, that was a nice surprise. Um, so we are continuing on in the book of Romans. And like I said before, I'll be taking my channel into a new direction after the book of Romans is finished and be doing individual 10 minute segments per day on a specific subject. Um, and so, but I like to finish what I started. I, I hate like just dropping and then, you know, stopping a whole entire book of the Bible. I don't think that's the right thing to do. So I'm going to finish the book of Romans up. We were in Romans 11 last week, um, the last video, and we are continuing in it. And I'm going to try to finish it today because it was really a longer uh, chapter. And so I will be reading a little bit more and then stopping and explaining it. And so this is Paul speaking. And this is about um, salvation coming to the Gentiles and how that occurred. And so anyone that is a anyone that is not a Jew would be considered a Gentile. So I will get right into it. So we left off on uh, Romans 11 and uh, verse 11. So beginning in it, it says, Did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient, so God made salvation available to the Gentiles. But he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. Now, if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. I am saying all this especially for you Gentiles. God has appointed me as the apostle to the Gentiles. And this is Paul speaking. I stress this for I want someone somehow to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have. So I might save some of so I might save some of them. For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who were dead. So stopping right there. So um, basically Paul is saying that um, did they fall beyond recovery? No, because God always saves a remnant for himself of his people. That was true through the whole entire Old Testament. When Jewish people rejected him, they killed the prophets, stoned the prophets. There was always a remnant that were true believers. And so this is talking about that's going to be the same thing here. But because they rejected the offer of salvation, a, a, a large amount of them, the Gentiles, it was brought to the Gentiles. Paul is the apostle to spite specifically to the Gentiles, but he is also preached to the Jews too. And so this offer of salvation came to the Gentiles and in it, he hopes to make the Jewish people jealous that the, the Jews, I mean, the Gentiles now have salvation and can have salvation by faith and they can have the gift of the Holy Spirit and the promises of God to, and hope to bring them back and woo them back. Sometimes it's the, you know, idea that you don't know what it's, what's missing until it's gone idea. And so going on in verse 16, he says, And since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, their descendants will also be holy, just as the entire batch of dough is holy because the portion given is an offer, as an offering is holy. So those original um, patriarchs like Abraham, Moses, you know, Isaac, Jacob were all true believers in God. And they were accounted as righteous because of their faith in God Almighty. For if the roots of the tree are holy, the branches will be too. And then in verse 17, But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel, have broken off. And you, Gentiles, who were branches from a wild olive tree, have been grafted in. 
So now you also receive the blessings God has promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. But you must not brag about being grafted in to replace the branches that were broken off. You are just a branch, not the root. So stopping there. So basically what he's saying is because of the unbelief, a branch, uh, uh, you know, because of unbelief, this quote branch of the Jews was broken off and a wild olive tree branch uh, was grafted in, which represents the Gentiles. And if anyone knows horticulture, you know, or gardening, you can graft in a um, branch onto a cut tree and wrap it in a way that it will, you know, feed from it, grow into it, and then produce fruit. And so this is the example he's giving. But he's saying, don't be proud or haughty about it because basically we didn't do anything. It was God's grace and mercy anyway. And we are just branches that can be cut off also. And we are not the root. The root is God Almighty, Jesus Christ. And so he's saying, you know, don't brag about it. Don't get too haughty about this. And then in verse 19, he says, well, you may say, those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He is severe towards those who disobeyed, but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting, you also will be cut off. And if the people of Israel turn from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again. For God has the power to graft them back into the tree. You, by nature, were a branch cut from a wild olive tree. So if God was willing to do something contrary to nature by grafting you into his cultivated tree, he will be far more eager to graft the original branches back into the tree where they belong. So stopping there, this is just a warning that, you know, we, first of all, we did none of it, okay? We wouldn't even come to faith in Christ if it wasn't for God, you know, first of all, selecting us, calling us to himself, changing our hearts and hardening them, convicting us of sin and giving us the faith to believe. So we have nothing to brag about. And also, a true believer is going to remain with Christ. A false believer will be shown because he'll leave. It'll be a never coming back situation. It'll just be gone forever. And we've seen, you know, we probably all know people maybe in our lives that said at one time they were Christian and then they go off. They never come back. They were never a believer in the first place. Okay. And so um, you cannot lose your salvation. You are forever. God has you know, forever has you in the palm of his hand, um, you know, but we don't need to be haughty and believe we have done anything to um, be grafted into this, you know, line of Abraham. It is solely by grace we have through Jesus Christ. And then going on, it says, God's mercy is for everyone. I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters so that you will not feel proud about yourselves. Some of his people, some of the people of Israel have hard hearts, but this will last only until the full number of Gentiles comes to Christ. And so all of all Israel will be saved as the scriptures say, the one who rescues will come from Jerusalem and he will turn Israel away from ungodliness. And this is my covenant with them, that I will take away their sins. Many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news, that's the gospel, and, these ben and this benefits you Gentiles. Yet they are still the people he loves because he chose their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. So stopping there for a moment. Uh, and then I'll be finishing the chapter off. So basically, um, they rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had hard hearts, just like Gentiles can, okay? But notice it says, but this will last only until the full number of Gentiles comes to Christ. 
God obviously knows the full number of Gentiles who will believe in Jesus Christ. And after that's done, there will be a saving work going out further into the nation of Israel. And, you know, I believe this coincides with the end times uh, because basically if you go into all of that and, and, and better ex people who are better to explain that instead of myself would be Jan Markell her uh, videos you can peruse all of them where they go very much in depth to that and how the Antichrist will come and you know it has a lot to do with Israel and so I believe this talks about that and so they'll realize like oh okay you know Jesus Christ is the Messiah and and so I believe that um, we're still in the time and period of you know the Gentiles and I think you know it's probably getting to be a short window and then we'll be you know raptured and then the Antichrist will make his um, presence evident and then will that will be going into the whole entire armageddon at that point and you know uh, the tribulation i'm sorry and so basically you know you don't want to be in that at all period you don't want to be in that because you know christians are going to be dying in that time period because y you would have to be taking the mark of the beast and christians will not do that true believers in christ will not take the mark of the beast so rather than go through that it would be best to accept him now okay and so then going on in verse 30 it says once you gentiles were rebels against god but when the people of israel rebelled against him god was merciful to you instead he turned his favor towards the gentiles for a period now they are the rebels and god's mercy has come to you so that they too will share in god's mercy for God has imprisoned everyone in disobedience so he could have mercy on everyone. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. For who can know the Lord's thoughts and who knows enough to give him advice? And who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Amen. And that is the end of the chapter. And so basically, so like again, Israel rebelled. The gospel was turned to the Gentiles. It's the period of the Gentiles now where the gospel is going forth into all of the world to all of the gentiles and it still goes to the jews also and whoever believes in the name of jesus christ is saved and he shows mercy on them so jews can accept christ right now and then eventually when the church is raptured i believe more of their eyes will be opened and they'll realize this missed opportunity they will have special witnesses you know, coming um, in the tribulation, proclaiming the gospel, and they'll realize it. And I believe that is when they'll their hearts will be unhardened and that they will be accepting Christ. Um, will they still have to deal with that tribulation and be, you know, martyrs and so forth? Absolutely. But they still will be saved. Because remember the Bible talked about, and I said this before, Fear the one, don't fear the one who can just kill your body, but fear the one who can kill your body and soul. And that would be eternal death. And so that would be God. And so basically, even if we do die as martyrs for Christ, that actually is a blessing in itself because you get a special reward for that. And it shows how faithful and staunch you were in believing Christ and standing firm in uh, Jesus Christ's name. So that is not something to be feared in itself. No, it wouldn't be pleasant, but it is a great honor to die for Christ and standing firm. You know, so, um, and there's people, I just got done reading an article this morning, actually, from a prophecy magazine. And it was talking about a huge explosion in Christian martyrdom has occurred in 2021. In fact, Nigerian Christians are being slaughtered. 
um, Christians in um, Afghan, uh, where we pulled out, are being slaughtered house by house. You know, um, there is Christians in um, North Korea, you know, and on and on. And those people have a special honor and a special blessing from Christ. And I always pray that they would remain strong in the face of that persecution. And we don't know if that will come here. We can't imagine that, but we don't know whether it will. I see things going on in Western countries right now that I would have never thought had occurred. And so don't ever say that it can't happen here. And I just pray that we all remain strong. If you do not know Christ, I pray that you would turn to him today and not wait until the rapture of the church and the Christians are taken out and evil is allowed to just multiply just completely. And, you know, it will be terrible times and I would hate for anyone to have to be in those times. So I pray for your salvation. I hope that you all have a rest of your, a good rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow with Romans chapter 12.